welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are now into the evaluate part of our problem solving modeling task. This is video eight and we are looking at verified results. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about how you can engage with McClutchy Maths. Firstly, if you consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you'll always know when the next video is ready to watch. If you could tell someone about the video, consider hitting that little arrow button and sharing it with a friend um, or even put it on your class OneNote. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram for other tips, tricks and news and why not consider saying thanks. There's a little heart button that you can press and donate $2 to the upkeep and running of the channel and we really appreciate your input. Well, let's get straight into looking at the evaluate section for the ISMG. Now, the old evaluate section under the 2019 syllabus only had three dot points in the top box. Now we've got five. Now we're gonna unpack all of these over the upcoming videos. Our focus today is on this top box here and a verified results. So we didn't really see this in our last one at all. You're probably wondering what on earth is that? So first of all, you'll notice that it's plural. And then we drop down to the next one here, which is a verified result, singular. And then if we go down to that last one here, there's nothing in there about verifying the results at all. So if we completely leave that section out, we automatically go to the one or even the two section here. Okay, so first of all, this replaces in our last syllabus where we talked about evaluating the reasonableness of results. That was part of a whole wordy descriptor, evaluating the reasonableness of the results, the observations and evaluating the reasonableness of the assumptions. You'll notice that now this evaluation of reasonableness of the solution, considering the assumptions and the observations has been broken out from one single dot point into these two other dot points. But this one up here is also part of that original dot point. It's actually evaluating the reasonableness of results and it's just been put into student friendly language. So it does replace that criteria and it um, is a good idea to understand what that actually means. Now, first of all, we did talk about the fact that it's plural, so that usually you'll have more than one result as part of your assignment. We need to be verifying not just one result, but all of the results that we can. So you might be thinking, well, what does verified even mean? Well, I've got some synonyms here. You know I love a good synonym. Confirmed, proven, backed up and supported, evidenced, demonstrated, upheld, corroborated and established. So basically we're talking about how reasonable our results are and we've got some justification and some backup to prove it. Okay, so let's think about what the results of an assignment could be. This is all gonna depend on the context of your assignment, but it can include a number of things. For example, a graph you, could be, could, you have created could be one of the results. An equation or a function that you developed is called a model. And the model it might have been part of your results that you have created for your assignment. If you've made a prediction that answered a question of the assignment, that's part of your results. Calculations produced by formulas are part of your results. And if there's a question that's posed, the question might be, do Australians drink enough water? Um, then using whatever methods you've used to prove that or to say yes or no to that, then that answer is part of your results. If you had to make a recommendation of some kind, then that is part of the results. Okay, so how do we verify them? How do we prove them? How do we show the evidence for them? Well, there's quite a number of ways and we wanna consider all of these ways. Firstly, we wanna show all our steps of working as we're doing it, not skipping any steps. This includes our working using technology. Now you might wanna jump back to a couple of videos ago, we talked about efficient use of technology. And under that, I show you how to show your working using technology. You could also use a second method to verify your results. So that could be using one technology, like a handheld calculator, and then a spreadsheet. It could be using Desmos and an, um, a different graphing technology such as Excel. Um, it might be, for example, you've used Excel to calculate some statistics, but then you go and use an online statistic cal calculator and you have those side by side. So this is verifying or proving that your results are accurate and correct. You could also use algebraic techniques. So come up with a formula using an algebraic mathematical method. Graphs could be used as well as different maths methods. So there's lots of different ways that you can prove things. I'm gonna give a little example using trigonometry. 
Now, we did an assignment at my school a couple of years back where students went outside with um, equipment, clinometers and measuring tapes. And they had to look at tall objects like trees and flagpoles, use the equipment that was provided to them. And then they had to work out um, using trigonometry, sine, cosine and tangent formulas, how tall those objects were. Now, an alternative method that they could have used to verify the accuracy of their readings was to use similar triangles. So all those tall objects would have produced shadows. Human beings produce shadows as well. If you measure the shadows, then you can work out the height of the um, tall object and you've got an alternative mathematical method to prove or verify your results. So that's an example from real life. Okay, verified work checks that results are reasonable. So this comes back to the 2019 syllabus where it was called evaluating the reasonableness of results. So we do need to consider that when we come to an answer, how reasonable or logical that answer is. So it can be done a number of ways. You could do it through research, but remembering research is not the primary focus of your PSMT. However, you can use research to support an argument that a result is reasonable. For example, going back to my trigonometry example, let's say that you found using your calculations and using your measuring tools that the height of a tree was 200 metres tall. Now that's extremely unreasonable. I doubt that there would be very many, if any, 200 metre tall trees in Australia. Um, so that might be something to jump onto the internet and say, what is the tallest tree in Australia? And if it comes out that the tallest tree in Australia is 80 metres tall, you can use that ref reference from the internet, from a reliable source online, to say, my result is not reasonable because the tallest tree recorded in Australia is 80 metres and I've calculated a 200 metre tree. Now this could take you down one of two roads. First of all, I'd be questioning how accurate was my results. Do I need to go and redo the experiment again to get more accurate results? Were my calculations done correctly? However, if I also use similar triangles to verify my results and they definitely came up, then this would be something you could be using as part of your discussion about the results. It can also be verified using discussion. And I would recommend this as part of justification or writing a paragraph or a couple of sentences about the results and how reasonable they are. I'm going to give you some examples now and hopefully this will shed some more light on what I'm talking about. Now, one of the big assignments people do in high school is budgeting assignments. Our budget was for a single person who was a professional. They've got $3,200 worth of expenses in a year. Here are some ways we could verify that. Firstly, showing all the steps of working. If we've done it in Excel, you want to take a snapshot of the whole budget spreadsheet and that needs to be in the body of your assignment. That's the first way, showing all the working. Secondly, you could support a discussion about how reasonable these expenses are with some research. So for example, if I looked on this particular website, homeloanexperts.com, I would find that the living cost in Australia for one person is $2,835. Now, I've got expenses adding up to $3,200, which is a bit more than the average Australian. It's not out of the ballpark, it's in the vicinity. So I could argue that while this is a bit more, this person's got some extra luxuries perhaps, perhaps they live in a more expensive city, um, then I can say, well, it's, it's in the ballpark of 2,800, so therefore it's reasonable. However, if this came out at $32,000, I'd be saying that's a very unreasonable budget for a single person. It's a clue for me to go back and have a look and see if I've done something wrong somewhere along the way. My second example is solving problems with simultaneous equations. And this is something that you might typically see in a methods type assignment. They might be nonlinear equations or linear equations, whatever the case may be. Now my result produced an algebraic result or solution of coordinates of one and five. Now, I don't know what the context for this is, I just know that my x coordinates one, my y coordinates five. Now there's different ways I can verify this result. Firstly, I should have shown all my working to solve those simultaneous equations to begin with. What I could also do is graph the two equations using software and show that this is my point of intersection. And a third thing I could do is I could actually substitute this back into both equations and show algebraically that it works. Um, here's my third example, bivariate data analysis. As you know by now, this is one of my favourite topics. Okay, so my results might have included a number of things. Correlation of 0.72, a least squared regression equation developed using algebra and formulas. 
and I might have come up with a residual plot showing some random scatter. So for when we're doing this particular assignment in IA1 for general maths in year 12, there'll be lots of results that you will have as part of your assignment. Now you need to verify them. So I could do this a number of ways. First of all, when I've done these algebraic techniques as part two there, I can show all of my working. I could show all of my working. So if this has been generated from Excel, I can show that snapshot of the Excel formulas. Um, if I've come up with a residual plot, residual plots involve working as well. We typically do them in Excel, but showing the formula for um, residual equals actual takeaway predicted, showing that I've done that formula in Excel and showing that I've used my least squared regression equation to come up with predictions. The other thing I could do is plot the data on a scatter plot and use the technology to come up with the equation, which is called the trend line in Excel. Now, if I've developed this algebraically and I come up with the same formula in Excel, I have verified the accuracy of my results. And I should state that as well, that there may be a little bit of difference for rounding, but if I come up with a 3.2 something in Excel and a 6.45 something in Excel, then I've verified my results that I've come up with algebraically. The residual plot is actually a way to verify results. It verifies that this equation that I've come up with is suitable for linear relationships and that I can use Pearson's correlation coefficient effectively as an appropriate measurement of the correlation. So when I do that residual plot and it shows random scatter, what I'm doing is I'm verifying this result and I'm verifying that result. They are both results that can be used. They are both linear. I should definitely discuss this. So it's not just a case of putting the residual plot in there saying random scatter, therefore it's linear. That's not a discussion, that's not verification. Verification involves some discussion and I should be talking about its reasonableness. Something else I could consider doing now, let's say this was the relationship between somebody's arm length and their foot length. I'd be expecting strong correlation. I'd be expecting people with very big feet to also have bigger body parts as well. So I'd be expecting strong correlation there. That could be something I could discuss as part of my evaluation. Looking now at an example four where I have done some interpolation and extrapolation. So I've made a prediction of someone's height given their weight and I've used a least squared regression equation for that. And I came up with a prediction of 215 centimetres. So there's different ways that I could verify this result. Firstly, I need to acknowledge that extrapolation is unreliable. Therefore, if I've done an extrapolation prediction, it's always going to be unreliable, unreasonable. Um, I could also consider this correlation um, in, from my data set. If the correlation was low, then this is probably not a very reasonable prediction. Um, if it was strong correlation and it was interpolation that I did as part of my predicting processes, then that could also be considered to be a reasonable result. I could also consider some research. So if I have a look um, in the Guinness World Records website, I found that the tallest person ever was a part-time farmer from Turkey um, named Sultan Kosin, and he was 246 centimetres tall. Now, because my height that I've predicted is below the tallest man um, living, then I could say that's in the range of possible heights. If I found a four metre height, I'd be questioning the reasonableness of my results. But because that's in a reasonable range, then using a quote and or a prediction in a source, then I can show that my prediction is reasonable. I can also use some technology to confirm those algebraic techniques. So for example, um, I've used an equation here. This was the equation I came up with and I've substituted in someone's weight and I've come up with this prediction and then I've shown um, the working from Excel using show formulas. So I've actually shown where I came up with the 217. That's another way I can verify my results using technology. What about in math methods? Let's say I've got an assignment with a calculus context and my results included a nonlinear model solving a maximization or a minimization problem. Well, there's different ways that I can verify my results there. First of all, you've heard me say it before, you're gonna hear it again, show all your steps of working um, using those algebraic techniques. And then I could use graphing technology such as Desmos or GeoGebra to verify my results. I could also consider perhaps using something like a different mathematical method if it's in the context and it, it suits, I could use something like the trapezoidal wheel to verify my previous calculations. So I may use one mathematical method and I can use a different mathematical method to see if there's any variance there. And then of course, always, always, always discussing the reasonableness of those results after I've done the work. 
Now we talked about trigonometry earlier in the video and here's what I'm talking about here, showing the steps using technology. There are online trigonometry calculators um, looking at similar triangles, also considering heights, normal heights of buildings. I could also um, say, well, that's a four story building um, and look at an online source and it says the average four story building is this tall. How does that compare to my results there as well? Well, I hope you found this video helpful today. I hope it unpacks more of that ISMG for you and will help you to get in that six to seven range um, for solve and also in that four to five range for evaluate, which is what we're talking about today. If you've got any questions about anything you saw in today's video or heard me say, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com is the place to reach me. It's a great place to ask more in-depth questions. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have an incredible day.